Chapter 1, The Case The city of Los Angeles in the 1940s was a hotbed of crime and corruption, and private detective Jack Steele knew it better than anyone. He had been in the game for years and had seen it all. But when wealthy businessman William Wilson walked into his office, Jack knew that this case was going to be different. William Wilson was a tall, imposing man, with piercing blue eyes and a voice that commanded respect. He was dressed in a tailored suit and carried himself with an air of confidence. Jack could tell that he was not a man to be trifled with. Mr. Steele, I need your help, William said, taking a seat in front of Jack's desk. Jack leaned back in his chair and studied his potential client. What kind of help? It's my wife, William said, his voice strained. She's disappeared. Jack raised an eyebrow. Disappeared? What do you mean? She left our home three days ago and hasn't been seen since. I've tried to track her down, but I've come up empty. I need someone who can find her, someone who can get to the truth. Jack knew that this was going to be a difficult case. Missing persons cases were never easy, especially when the person in question was the wife of a wealthy businessman. But Jack couldn't resist the challenge. Okay, Mr. Wilson. I'll take your case. But I need to know everything. When did you last see your wife? Were there any signs of a struggle? Any leads? William took a deep breath and began to recount the events of the last few days. He told Jack that his wife, Elizabeth, had left their home three days ago, saying that she was going to visit her sister in San Francisco. But William had become suspicious when he received a call from his wife's sister, who said that Elizabeth had never arrived. Jack listened intently, taking notes as William spoke. He could tell that there was more to this story than met the eye. Okay, Mr. Wilson. I'll need to do some investigating. Can you give me any more information? Any friends or acquaintances that Mary may have mentioned? William shook his head. Elizabeth was a private person. She didn't have many friends. Jack sighed. Okay, I'll start with what I have. I'll need to see your home, speak to your staff, and get a sense of Elizabeth's daily routine. Can you arrange that? William nodded. Of course. Whatever you need. Jack stood up and extended his hand. Then we have a deal. I'll do my best to find your wife, Mr. Wilson. As William left the office, Jack knew that he had his work cut out for him. This was going to be a tough case, but he was determined to get to the bottom of it. He gathered his notepad and pen and headed out into the city to begin his investigation. Jack spent the next few hours gathering information about the missing wife. He started by visiting the couple's home, a sprawling mansion on the outskirts of the city. The house was impressive, with ornate fixtures, expensive art pieces, and a pool in the backyard. Jack approached the door, but no one answered his knock. He tried again, but still no response. He decided to look around the property and see if he could find any clues. As he walked around the backyard, Jack noticed a few things that caught his attention. There were several cigarette butts scattered around the pool, indicating that someone had been smoking there recently. He also saw a few drops of blood on the concrete near the edge of the pool. Jack took note of these details in his notepad and continued his investigation. Next, Jack headed to the nightclub where the missing wife was last seen. The club was called the Blue Note, and it was located in the heart of the city. Jack arrived just as the club was opening for the evening, and he could already hear the sound of jazz music pouring out of the entrance. Inside, the club was dark and smoky, with a stage at one end and a bar at the other. The waitresses wore tight-fitting dresses, and the patrons were mostly men in suits and fedoras. Jack spotted the owner of the club, a slick-looking man with slick back hair and a toothy grin. Jack approached him and introduced himself. I'm Jack, a private investigator, he said, flashing his badge. I'm looking for a missing woman who was last seen here a few nights ago. Do you know anything about it? The owner's expression changed from friendly to guarded. I don't know what you're talking about, he said, his voice low and menacing. Jack knew that he wasn't going to get any information out of the owner, so he decided to talk to some of the other patrons. 
he struck up a conversation with a man at the bar, who turned out to be a regular customer. I'm looking for a woman who was last seen here a few nights ago, Jack said, trying to keep his tone casual. Did you happen to see anything unusual that night? The man looked at Jack warily. I don't know what you're talking about, he said, before turning back to his drink. Jack realized that he wasn't going to get any information from the patrons either, so he decided to leave the club and continue his investigation elsewhere. As he walked down the street, Jack noticed a shadowy figure following him. He quickened his pace, and the figure did the same. Jack knew that he was being followed and that he needed to act fast. He turned a corner, and when the figure came into view, Jack grabbed him by the arm and spun him around. What do you want? Jack demanded. The man looked scared and confused. I, I don't want any trouble, he stammered. I was just following you because I thought you might need some help. Jack was skeptical, but he decided to give the man the benefit of the doubt. All right, he said, releasing the man's arm. Thanks for the offer, but I can handle things on my own. The man nodded and scurried off down the street, and Jack continued on his way. He knew that he was getting close to something, but he didn't know what it was yet. He needed more information, and he was going to have to work hard to get it. As he walked, Jack thought about the case and the missing wife. He wondered what had happened to her and why she had disappeared. He also thought about the shadowy figure that had been following him and wondered if it was connected to the case. He decided to keep an eye out for the mysterious person and made a mental note to be extra careful. Jack again stopped at the couple's home. He wanted to get a sense of their living situation and see if there were any clues as to where the missing wife might have gone. When he arrived, he was greeted by a large, imposing mansion with a well-manicured lawn and a wrought iron gate. He pressed the intercom button and announced himself as a private investigator working on behalf of William. After a few moments, the gate slowly creaked open, and Jack made his way up the winding driveway to the house. As he approached the front door, it swung open, and a tall, thin man appeared in the doorway. Hello there, Jack said, introducing himself. I'm Jack, a private investigator hired by William to find his wife. The man looked Jack up and down suspiciously. I'm Mr. Peters, the butler, he said. Please come in. Jack followed Mr. Peters into the house and was immediately struck by the opulence of his surroundings. The entryway was adorned with marble floors and walls, and a large chandelier hung from the ceiling. Mr. Peters led him into a sitting room, where William was waiting for him. Jack, good to see you, William said, extending his hand. Jack shook his hand and took a seat across from him. So, tell me more about your wife and what happened, he said, getting straight to the point. William took a deep breath and began to explain the situation. My wife, Elizabeth, has been missing for a week now, he said. I've called the police, but they haven't been able to find her. I'm worried that something terrible has happened to her. Jack nodded sympathetically. Do you have any leads, any ideas of where she might have gone? William shook his head. None. Elizabeth and I had a fight the night she disappeared, but it wasn't anything out of the ordinary. She just stormed out, and I haven't seen or heard from her since. Jack made a note of this in his notepad. Is there anything else you can tell me about your wife? Did she have any enemies, any troubles at work, anything that might have caused her to run away? William hesitated for a moment before answering. I don't think so. Elizabeth was a kind woman, always helping others. She didn't have any enemies that I know of, and she loved her job as a social worker. Jack jotted this down in his notepad, making a mental note to investigate Elizabeth's workplace and colleagues. Do you have a recent photo of your wife that I could use to help identify her? William reached into his pocket and pulled out a small photograph. Here you go, he said, handing it to Jack. Please, find my wife. I'm desperate to know that she's safe. Jack nodded, taking the photo and rising from his seat. I'll do everything I can to find her, he said, before making his way out of the house and into the city. As he walked, Jack examined the photograph closely. Elizabeth was a beautiful woman with long blonde hair and bright blue eyes. 
He wondered what had caused her to disappear and made a mental note to look into her social work colleagues and any recent cases she had been working on. It was clear that this was going to be a complex case, but Jack was determined to get to the bottom of it. He had a hunch that there was more to the story than William was letting on, and he was determined to uncover the truth. End of chapter 1, chapter 2, The Underbelly, would be continued from next video.